Massachusetts, uh, be able to work with, with Bill. Uh, Bill is a, a research ecologist with the USDA Forest Service. He works with Eastern Forest Threat Center at the Southern Research Station in, in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, he received his uh, Master's in Entomology from the University of Georgia and a PhD in Ecology from the University of Georgia. Uh, after that, he worked at Oak Ridge and then I believe moved to Asheville about 10 years ago mm -hmm. to uh, continue his work uh, on this. Mm -hmm. The uh, other thing that we ought to recognize is um, Bill is going to be talking about Forewarn, and Forewarn uh, did win the National Cross Agency Award uh, last year uh, for this work, which is very high and prestigious. Mm -hmm. So, welcome, Dr. Harper. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jim. It's always a pleasure to talk about Coral Warren, which is our. satellite-based forest change and disturbance detection system. And uh, it's got a cast of thousands here, at least five different agencies. Okay. And uh, it's a national scale, near real time satellite-based system. And it covers the entire lower 48 United States. And we produce a new set of maps showing potential forest disturbances every eight days. I don't know what I was thinking. And it uh, detects all kinds of force disturbances. So, and it's 231 meter resolution, modus resolution. So it's rather coarse, but remember we're doing sea to shining sea. And it's a, a result of a cooperation among four different government agencies and one academic. Okay. Uh, well, we, this is our rollout notice. Our official rollout was in March of 2012, but we were secretly operating since January. 2010. So we're in our sixth year of operation with, with no major changes to the algorithm. So you know, starting our sixth year. And uh, there are other folks inside the Forest Service who are watching out for forest disturbances. We've got men and women who fly in small, light aircraft. And they look out the window and look for uh, disturbed forces. They have a, a handheld GIS system. And we call these folks the Aerial Sur Disturbance Survey Program. And they were very proud they calculated in 2011 that they covered 70% of the forests in the lower 48 United States. But that means they flew over at one time. So if you're a forest manager and you're lucky, you got one overflight from them. If you're unlucky, you got none. But uh, our forewarn system, because it's satellite based, essentially covers 100% of the forests every eight days. So it's a nice, a nice coverage. And we think these two uh, capabilities are very, very complementary because forewarn is force resolution, but we do it on a regular basis. And the ADS surveys are very labor intensive and hazardous and it's very skilled labor. So they're really they're made for each other. Okay. Uh, and we detect all kinds of force disturbances, all the sort of classical ones you can think of, but it is 231 meter resolution, fairly coarse, but of course it's not necessary for a whole forest itself to be disturbed. It just get enough change, either severe change in one point or a light change possible. Will, will still be able to detect it. And these are custom generated products. They're not anything to do with the standard for uh, modus products. And we produce three different kinds of products that if you're more about use the same. Okay. Now, thanks to our NEMAC colleagues, forewarned disturbance maps are made available through a web-based viewer, and we call it the Forest Change Assessment Viewer. And most of the maps I'm going to show you are pulled straight out of the viewer. There's nothing fancy about it. And this, uh, this forest change assessment viewer is the main delivery vehicle, and again, that's from our, NAM, uh, our NEMAC colleagues, and it's completely open. No cost to do it, no user ID or password. It's, it uses a, any browser on any machine. There's nothing downloaded in the machine. We, uh, we uh, try to make it easy and not intimidating for our not necessarily technical users. And we show all the historical 401 products plus emphasis on the most, the three most recent eight-day products. And uh, the kicker is we show a lot of other relevant things, so uh, insect maps, disease maps, fire maps. And the idea is that by the time you get finished and you push back, the user pushes back from the force change assessment view, they have a pretty good idea, not only there was a disturbance there, but a first guess about what might have actually caused it. And it's very, uh, very democratic. Uh, we use the same set of tools and we see the same product as soon as we use it. 
okay, well, how does this thing work? It sounds pretty magical, but it's not magic. It's a simple comparison between two things. The current greenness, satellite greenness, and DBI, current view, of course, uh, have to be careful of clouds and other things. And we compare that current greenness with an expectation we develop of normal, what healthy, normal forests should look like, how green they should be. And we develop this expected greenness from a 12, 12, 14 year now, uh, MODIS satellite record. And now, uh, as soon as you see that this comparison is the way it works, you can see that if it's currently less green than we expected, well, that's the basis for saying it's potentially disturbed. But if it's got more greenness than we expected normal healthy forest to have, well, then they've got vigorous recovering vegetation. And uh, we mask out everything but the forests, but we can forewarn actually produces disturbance for uh, all terrestrial vegetation. Uh, we developed the algorithms in 2009, and it was good because we got an article in the PERS and a cover a picture of the PERS that describes the algorithms. So this normal or expected greenness value is really the, the crux of this, and it's both spatially customized for this particular location and temporally customized for this particular time. And uh, so there are eight-day periods, and but we calculate it on the basis of a preceding 24-day window to avoid clouds. And so there's 46 of these eight-day periods in a year. We do this year-round. We don't just stop and move. And so this customization acts to move the expected value along in the way that the phenology of the rules would develop. Okay. So every map I'm going to show you is the same kind of uh, units. It's as a percentage of what we expected. So if it's, correct, if it's less than 100% of what we expected, it's going to be a potential disturbance. We show those in colors of greens, yellows, and reds. If it's greater than 100%, it's recovery, and we show those as blues. And it's worth noting that there's kind of a directness to this, because we're seeing the disturbances like through the eyes of the vegetation. If it doesn't affect the vegetation, we see it to whatever degree it affects the vegetation. Okay. So in 2011, we had a spate of tornadoes, I bet you remember, across the southeast United States. And I call your attention to all these parallel red cat scratches. And if you look closely, go ahead and next one. Yeah, we zoom in on one of these. This is uh, Birmingham. This one just missed Birmingham. It's a, it's a red track with yellow and green around the edges. Uh, missed Birmingham, didn't miss Tuscaloosa. So we can zoom in on Tuscaloosa. This gives you an idea of the size of those most pixels. And, uh, Okay, and you might say, okay, Bill, a tornado is a big, you know, a serious big disturbance. But what about the more subtle things? Well, now we're in Pennsylvania. You can see here's New York State, and here's Pennsylvania, and this is the Allegheny National Forest and its fall redworm outbreak. So this is in the fall. The leaves are already losing their, uh, the trees are already losing their leaves, and yet we're able to still, with forewarn, detect these relatively subtle differences that indicate uh, a uh, fall with the foliage. Okay, well we actually produce three different standard classical products, and they differ on the basis of the age of the disturbances that are mapped. And it's, it's how we develop that expected normal uh, layer with which we're doing the comparison. If, if we use the prior year only, then all the disturbances that show have to be less than one year old. If we go back three previous years, then we're looking at all the disturbances that we just talked about, plus all the ones that are three years old. And then finally, we use the entire available MODIS baseline period, which is now 14 years. So it shows all the disturbances since MODIS. Now, this is the Yazoo tornado that was in Mississippi. And that top image was taken, the, it happened in 2009. And the top image is a foreign product from 2010 based on the one year product. And you can see the typical cat scratch. With, and you notice how you can see the bouncing along of the tornado. But the next one is a forewarned product from 2011 with a one year baseline. And now the new normal has been redefined to be what it was in the disturbed tornado track. So now everything is green, because, everything is blue because it's coming back, it's recovering from the post tornado normal. So in this way, forewarned can not only track the disturbance, but it can track the recovery of the plants from the disturbance. Okay, so here's a, this is a Colorado close to uh, the Four Corners area, and this is spruce bark beetle mortality. Bark beetle, spruce bark beetle is going to be the next mountain pine beetle. This is the one year, and now click it, we're going to go to the three year, so it's more, right? And now finally the all year, it's even more yet. 
And one more time, and we'll see. This is, this is the map that's produced by the people who are flying in the airplanes looking out the window. And one more, I, yeah. and so that's a comparison of the all your product and the air, airplane maps. And we first saw this, ah, what are these funny, you know, deciduous tooth roots? That looks funny. And if you look at the Landsat, yeah, you can see that this actually conforms quite nicely to the, the physiography of this particular area. Okay. Now, in 2011, we saw a, an insect pest, the, the pine butterfly. We've never seen it. Hadn't seen it for 30 years. And it showed up in the Mount Air National Forest in Oregon. And they flew special. They launched a lot of aircraft. And the aircraft people, the aerial sketch mappers, drew these black lines after this special effort. But this is the standard 401 product, and I think you'll agree that it actually matches up pretty well with the special aerial survey. This is kind of an epileptic uh, comparison between a set, this is Southern California now, and these are wildfires, old wildfire perimeters. And if you look at the 401 image, you can see that there's a lasting imprint in the 401 picture that shows the, the remaining disturbance from old wildfires. And the variance in there, reflects the uh, severity of the burn. Okay, so a couple of things I wanted to point out that we're very proud of. The top one is a, a feature that on the viewers we call share this map. So a user can be looking at the viewer with a particular extent at a particular layer, and you, get a, you click a button and it makes a URL, a web address, and the person can uh, cut and paste that into an email and send it to someone else and now if you click on that same one, it launches the viewer looking at the same map at the same extent. And this is the smartest thing we ever did because now users can say, oh, I see this in my forest, what the heck is this? And we know exactly what they're talking about. Or we can see something in their forest and say, ooh, what's this? You better get in the pickup truck. So it, it really facilitates the communication uh, between the users and people with you. This one is also very nice. It's, we call it pest proximity. We took all those old historical layers of the sketch mappers and compressed all those polygons. And now the user, we call it pest proximity, the user can click and within a 75 kilometer radius, it produces a list, I call it the list of known suspects. It's all the insects and diseases that have been seen within that area and they, we sort them by the, by the amount of area that they affect. So it's the, the, uh, it helps the uh, uh, forest managers to remember that, no, not that, no, not that. So it's a list of usual, usual suspects. Okay. Now we've got one other thing we can do, and that is you can click anywhere on the map, and after a few seconds, you get a graph that looks like this. And these are years, 14 years of modus now, and this is greenness in DDI. So these are annual profiles of greenness. This turns out to be a great thing. So uh, this is Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky. Here's West Virginia, and you can see these nice, interesting parallel tornado tracks. But I want to call your attention to these blotchy spots. At first, we saw this, I thought it was an error. But it's not an error. These are strip mines. And you, this, is not a, this is not a forewarning. This is a, 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 a in-hand photo. But you can click on this place. And now we see that this strip mine was started in 2007. We click over here. You get this kind of a track. You can see that this one was ended in 2003 or 2004 and revegetated. Okay, this is, uh, this is Linville Gorge, not too far from where we are in Asheville. And you click here, you get an interesting track. Here's a, a fire, but it was starting to recover from fire. We got a, a one-two punch, another fire, and something serious happened to this system because it changed. It moved it to some kind of new equilibrium. If you go to Linville Gorge, here's what you see. You see tall trees that, that are burned stocks and polonia, an invasive princess tree. So, this invasive species took advantage of the one-two punch to become uh, established here, change the whole thing. All right, so forewarn is not just measuring disturbance, but because of this comparison, the way it works, we also get to see effective weather departures. So hotter than normal, colder than normal, wetter than normal, drier than normal. And it turns out it's very sensitive to these kinds of weather departures as well. So here's the southeastern U.S. and another these blink comparisons. This is the all lands product, and this I'm comparing the forewarned product to the U.S. drought monitor, and it's always very highly comparable with the drought monitor, at least in 2011 in the southeastern United States, because it's indicating the drought severity. Oh, 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 oh,
So, in fact, uh, ordinarily it's easy to see burns, the edges of wildfires, but in Texas in 2011, the drought was so severe, we basically already had the disturbance needle pegged. We couldn't even see the edges of the, of the burns so very well. Now here's the, uh, the Lala fire that was the most severe fire uh, ever in Arizona. And I wanted to call your attention to this. This was an analysis that was done with Landsat, and this is the standard 401 product. And this is burn severity. So you can, uh, if, you, if you look though, everywhere the Landsat analysis shows a very high burn severity, it's already shown as very highly severely burned in the, in the standard 401 products. Okay, this is uh, Pagani Creek. It's up in the Boundary Waters Wilderness area. This is just a daily progression of this. a full water picture. This is a lake, actually. The wind was coming this way, and it's a shadow, a fire shadow caused by the lake. Keep going. So here's that same fire, but I want to fire attention down here. See all this stuff? This was an early frost, an early hard frost that put an end to the growing season in this area in October uh, 2011. And now I'm taking you down to Louisiana. Sorry, I'm jumping around with these comments. This is Louisiana, we, we uh, notified them. They flew immediately. They saw this. It's a forest tent caterpillar, a native pest. And uh, they flew with a GPS. And this is what we like to see a very nice correspondence to the full one. Okay, this is back uh, close to the Smoky Mountains. And you see this blue line right here? That's a tornado event. And we kind of knew about that one. But no one noticed this one down here. I think they have a Landsat for this. And see, here's the land. This is a 453 four, Landsat. There's the line from the Landsat that one everybody noticed. But here's just this clear one. And the one that, no one, we don't know if this was a, some kind of a linear could it hail or wind. Now, this is, a, this is an ironic one because we do this for the whole contrarian US, but right in our own backyard, the Asheville watershed, we saw a disturbance. And this is a, an interesting place because the reservoir at the bottom of the Asheville watershed is the one where the municipal water supply for all of Asheville. We saw this and we called them and said, you know, I think it's an insect. I thought it was an insect disturbance. And they were freaked out. They can't very well spray a pesticide on the place where all the drinking water. We went up and we saw, uh, they took us with them, which was very nice. And we saw all these dark green leaves that were shredded and then a whole bunch of new, fresh, light green leaves. And I'm thinking, what kind of insect? It's all these plants. Then we noticed these, these beams on the top sides of all the branches. It was a severe hail storm, a very localized, severe hail event. And they were relieved because they didn't have to do anything. But the point is, it's a very highly managed forest. A lot of people are watching this. And they had no idea that this hail event had happened on the other side. Okay, so this happened. So in case heaven isn't abundantly clear, doing this across the whole U.S., and that's why we're jumping around like this. Uh, okay, you know. Now, <clears throat> back close to us in Western North Carolina, this is not a forewarn image. This is a, uh, an aerial photo. And you see these little gray spots? These are the standing dead gray, gray ghosts, we call them, the standing skeletons of hemlock trees that have been killed by the hemlock of Lee Now, this is just a normal kind of a deciduous place where it's leaf on, leaf off. But if you click over here in one of these places with the gray ghost, what you see is a, a very characteristic signature like this. This is going from a, an evergreen, a more evergreen type forest to a more deciduous type forest. Why? Because we kill the hemlocks, which are evergreen. So this becomes a signature you can use. There's, there are those fires in Lindell Gorge up here. But these four worn red places are caused by the hemlock, Willia Delgid hemlock mortality. And here's again another one. Of those. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> so we have uh, used this in a process we call decadal trends. So you can look at uh, uh, separately for evergreen and deciduous, you can do a temporal linear regression through a particular, through these kind of data for every cell on the map under 50 million regressions and through 14 years, every eight days, and you get a slope map. And this slope will show you the long-term decadal trend in forest health in that, in that spot, both for evergreen and separately for deciduous. So, so all the places that have a negative slope will be places where that greenness is declining. Something's going on in the forest, greenness is declining, and all places with positive slopes are places where it's getting greener and the forest is thriving in some way. So 
Our eastern forest cut assessment center is very interested in these maps, especially the decline ones, because they sort of encompass all the deleterious agents that are going on that are in the forest. And we can use uh, ancillary data to tease those apart. So this is evergreen, and it's thrived. And this is a national scale map, so it's hard to see. But it's at least reassuring that in the southeastern US, you know, it shows us all the places the forest industry, which is mostly involved in evergreens, is, is located. So southeast and Pacific Northwest. Okay. Now this is evergreen, but it's declined. Okay. This is drought. Uh, this is mostly uh, mountain pine needle and, and fires. But if you look at Western North Carolina, you don't see much at this scale until you zoom in. And this is these blotches, these big blotches in the Smoky Mountains, basically much are hemlock, woolly, adelgid activity that has caused hemlock mortality. Now the funny thing is I'm going to stay at the same extent and switch from uh, evergreen decline to deciduous thrive. And I don't know if you can notice, but it's the same places. So we have some evidence here that there's some kind of competitive release of one or more deciduous species that are stepping up to take the place of the hemlock hemlocks that we've lost following the hemlock down. So we can polish this map, and I think this is one of the best hemlock mortality maps that anybody's got, especially for the smokers. Okay, one other thing I'm going to show, and that is uh, we're doing new things with forewarn. We've got what we call an adaptive length compositing method. Uh, and it's to fix a problem that we have, and that's because we do maximum value compositing over a 24-day period, but that delays how quickly we can see a particular disturbance. So if you think about that 24 days and you get a disturbance, some kind of disturbance halfway that drops the NDVI, the, max, the fact that we're taking maximum value to avoid clouds ensures that we get a pretty disturbance value and we can't see the disturbance for 24 days. So we got a delay in the detection of new disturbances with our standard product. So we generated a new kind of product, and we call it early detect. And the early detect base, basically is based on a method for quantifying a good look, a clear look. And now we start at the current time and we go backwards. So we're putting a priority on, on freshness, on recency. And uh, as soon as we can see a good look, we can detect the disturbance. So let's show you how that works. This is, remember the spate of tornadoes I started with. This is, was on April 27th. This is the standard for award product from May 8th, the first one after. And what you're looking at is nothing. You can't see it, right? And so there are a few little indications here, but generally you can't see it. I stay that one time. But with the early detect, I hope now you can see that we, as much sooner than we would have with the standard products, we can see all of these sort of Red scratches going this way. So the, the early detect product is working very well for us. Now, finally, uh, thanks to the help of our NEMAC colleagues, we've got a new viewer, the Forest Change Assessment Viewer 2. And this one is based on open layers, so it works on smartphones and pads and other devices you can take out in the forest. And uh, the main difference with the FCAD 2 is it shows all the terrestrial vegetation, not just the forests. So there are a set of nine masks that we created, and now that within the FCAP2, the user can turn on and off these masks to see whatever combinations of vegetation type he or she is interested in. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, it turns out that grasses and shrubs, non-forest vegetation, are shallowly rooted, and they respond very quickly to, in particular, heat and cold and wet and dry conditions. And a really smart forest manager can use the new FCAP too to watch these things as the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. The harbingers of what their forests are about to experience coming up next. Okay, so in conclusion, forewarn works really well. It does three kinds of things. It finds occurrences of disturbances. It can map the severity of the disturbances. And really, most interestingly of all, it can track the multiple year recovery from those disturbances. And we've seen the full gamut from tops right back to never is the same again. And uh, I think it's really good that Forewarn does all three of these things well. And I think it's one of the interesting and exciting places where pure research overlaps with management. And we think we've found the right piece. And we'll get one more, and then I'll stop. I know that was pretty fast. If you're interested in looking at any of those slides, you can go to this place and see all my slides. Uh, that 
Forest Change Assessment Viewer 2. You're welcome to play with it. It's at forewarn.forestrets.org, F-C-A-D, that's Forest Change Assessment Viewer 2. And the decadal trends are present at this place called the farm. Thanks very much. Yeah, we have time.